Hey guys, welcome back to Rage Gaming Videos. My name is Hollow, and today I'm playing an assassin. With this build, I make no sound and I'm barely visible to any enemies. And if you do see me, I can put out this black cloud that makes it so you can't see me anymore. Which, yeah, actually means we can play Backstab Simulator with any enemy in the open world. But then the two daggers of choice we're using, we have these two incredible light and dark effects. One using literal destined death to deal damage to an enemy over time and reduce its health by 10%. And the other, shooting out waves of light in a very similar animation, which does much more instant burst damage. Together, this makes for the ultimate dagger light and darkness build, and I'm going to ste step out of this bush to finally reveal it to you. We're using the Blade of Calling and the Black Knife. These are the weapons used by the Black Knives, who killed Godwin and sort of started a lot of the events of the game as we know it today. These weapons are made up of a stolen fragment of the Rune of Death. As you can see, the description says the blade reduces the enemy's maximum HP and continues to wear down HP for a while. So it does damage over time and also literally reduces their overall health by 10% while they're affected by this debuff. There's another way you can get this effect from one of the very expensive incantations from Malaketh himself. We're talking about the Black Blade incantation, which requires 46 faith and while it does look incredible this is like super faith focused one we can empower using talismans to make better with incantations but as you can see it has the same effect it does damage then damage over time and it also reduces their overall health for a period of time roughly 20 seconds so it does the same thing as the black knife's blade of death and to be honest when i go dex i'm dealing way more damage with this so Kind of, the knife is better than the incantation, unless you're going super holy and incantation based. It's interesting to do that comparison, but ultimately what we care about is using this Ash of War, the Blade of Death, on enemies to reduce their health by 10% and then going ham on them while they are extra vulnerable. Which is why we're pairing it with the Blade of Calling, another faith and deck scaling dagger. And this has the Blade of Gold Ash of War, which like the Blade of Death has a leap up in the air animation, a spin and then a shoot projectile quite similar, isn't it? Suspiciously similar. You see, this is the blade of Melina, our finger maiden. But this means we can literally throw out a blade of death, debuff the enemy, have them take damage over time, then swap to the blade of gold and start spamming out this burst damage because the blade of gold actually does more damage on its initial hit. Blade of death does more damage over time. So we debuff, we dot, and then we absolutely spam Blades of Gold, and then we continue to keep up that debuff and the damage over time. In boss fights, this is really cool because, you know, daggers, they attack really quickly. They get out a lot of damage if you're able to consistently spam out those long, long combos. The downside is they're really lacking range, obviously. They are tiny range. In PvP, that makes trading really difficult. That makes roll catching really difficult. Even though you've got great moveset and great animations, the range at which you're attacking is just so minimal that it's actually a nightmare. When we do get these trades off, it is a lot of damage. It feels great, but it's very hard to pull that off because of the tiny range. Having these two Ashes of War that have that range and these unique effects that are really beneficial, well, it kind of addresses that problem and makes for a really cool mix of range playstyle. So this Dex Faith build works perfectly for that, and we can combine other things to make it stronger. Like, for example, the Shard of Alexander, which is going to boost the attack power of our Ashes of War. That is literally perfect. Or the Sacred Scorpion Charm, which is raising the holy attack we have. Both of these daggers have physical and holy damage, so we're increasing the holy power. Our Flask of Wondrous Physic is going to provide us a temporary boost to our holy attacks, so that's another way to increase the power of it. And we're using the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, of course, because this greatly raises attack power on successive attacks, which is what we're doing with the dagger. We are attacking constantly, dealing lots of damage, and building up our attack power with that talisman in PvE scenarios that is skyrocketing our damage. And lastly, we've also got the Golden Vow Incantation, which is going to boost our attack power. So to start with, we have five 530 and 566 on our daggers. Then with our flask and golden vow, we have gone up to 666 and 712. Between 150 and 200 added AR to each weapon, getting us to a round of 1300 to 1400 AR on both weapons attacking at the same time. And once again, they attack really quickly and the AR is going up the more consecutive hits we hit. So this is really good. But you may have noticed that I also have Another dagger, just a regular random dagger. And that has Assassin's Gambit on it. A unique Ash of War that for a tiny bit of health will cloak me 
Now I look the same to you, but to others, I am now barely visible. Only when I am super close range can you even see me. And this works the same in PvE. So it's perfect for stealthing through areas, bypassing tough spots, completely ignoring enemies and getting behind them or around them or completely avoiding them, which is really great for the assassin playstyle. Not only does it grant that near invisibility, but it also silences your footsteps, which is something that we're getting from another effect. This chest piece, the Black Knife Armor chest piece, actually has the same effect. It completely muffles the sound of footsteps. So in PvP, you can sneak up on people, not only with invisibility, but literal silence, which is really scary. Finally, we are using another incantation, the Darkness Incantation, which is the one that generates that black cloud. And what this does is it actually applies a debuff or an effect to enemies. So you don't actually want to stand in it. You apply it to an enemy and it creates a barrier that they walk into. They completely lose track of where you are and they go back to being unaware. Once again, perfect if you've got aggro, you can reset it and then get backstabs over and over or lose the attention of enemies you don't want to fight. But did you know that there is an unaware status to all enemies? So every attack you do to an enemy that is unaware, 25% extra damage. It's really good. So technically, yes, you can literally backstab someone for bonus damage, use darkness to lose their awareness, backstab them again for bonus damage, and so on and so on and so on. This makes for some hilarious, but yeah, assassin gameplay. So with this build, we're able to sneak through all the areas of the world, silently and even semi-invisible, deal ridiculous unaware damage as an assassin should. In direct combat, we've got ridiculously long combos that rack up our attack power as we keep attacking, and we have the power of destined death to reduce the health of enemies, deal damage over time, and that golden ranged attack that has huge burst potential with our self-buffing to go with it. This is the true assassin playstyle, and it's very fun to play. In PvE, I must say it's shockingly effective, and in PvP, it's a worthy challenge that's fun to do, but my god, dagger range is absolute suffering, let me tell you. Still, using these Ashes of War and the tiny melee range, we have really fast combos, and we have long range possibility. So if you do land that Ash of War in PvP, does really clean out health and it does have a little bit of hyper armor as you're leaping up into the air which means you can trade with it which is very nice for a weapon like this or weapons like this that aren't great at trading normally. It's really cool to see Elden Ring and assassin stealth style gameplay actually be relevant. I was always wondering how can you make that work? Is there a full build you can do for that playstyle? And here we are. So let's quickly go over how to get this build yourself. Fortunately, the weapons are actually straightforward to get. The black knife is found here at the Altus Plateau. Just in front of the Sainted Hero's grave is a black knife, and it's sort of a mini boss. She's not too bad, actually. And once you defeat her, she literally drops the knife, so it's as easy as that. Meanwhile, the Blade of Calling is found here. As you're on your way to the mountaintops of the giants and you reach the Forbidden Lands, you actually want to double back and come back into the room where you just went down an elevator. At this elevator is actually a secret room, and I believe we can see it right here from the ground. It's a little ledge that leads down a corridor. If we actually take the elevator back up and then, as we go beyond it, drop down into that corridor we can open up this room and on the table here is an item it literally is where you find the blade to get this wonderful armor set then which is of course the black knife armor set in full you need to loot this exact body right here which is just on the top side of Ordina, this town. It's under the bridge that leads to the Halig tree. And this is in the consecrated snowfield, the left side of the mountaintops of the giants, or the secret side. Now to get the Assassin's Gambit Ash of War as your backup, as your invisibility, well, you're gonna need to learn it from Bernal, who is a warrior teaching Ashes of War. Unfortunately, I have uh, progressed the game, so he's no longer here in the Volcano Manor, but it doesn't matter. He leaves behind his sword, which conveniently, for some reason, teaches us Ashes of War, and it sells the Ash of War Assassin's Gambit. You can actually get this earlier as well. He'll teach you other things earlier. You don't need to be in the Volcano Manor. You can actually meet him down here in Limgrave at the War Master's Shack. During the day, he will show up there, and he will teach you Ashes of War there if you're still early in the game. Our very important talismans for this build are the Shard of Alexander. That comes from the Alexander storyline at the end of which he asks you to fight him and then after defeating him he will give you this very powerful talisman. The Rotten Winged Sword Insignia is another really important talisman because again it's going to raise our attack power on successive attacks. This comes from the end of Millicent storyline. Millicent storyline begins here, the Church of the Plague which is in Kaelid and at the end of that you must make a choice whether you're going to help Millicent or you're going to invade her. The reward for helping her is the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. 
Virginia. The reward for betraying her is Millicent's prosthesis. Both are incredible talismans, but at this point you must do two playthroughs or have a friend drop you the other one. Next is the Sacred Scorpion Charm, which is going to raise our holy attack. Again, great for both of our weapons, but the downside is it lowers your damage negation. That's fine in PvE, it's barely relevant, but in PvP that can be a problem and I wouldn't recommend it. I drop something like that and put on, hey, Dragon's Crest Great Shield to boost your physical damage negation. But either way, to get the Scorpion Charm here, you need to come to the Smoldering Church, which is where I'm standing. This is actually just as you're entering Kaelid, just off the top of Limgrave. Super easy to get to this early game. And when you come here, you will be invaded and you kill that invader and you get the talisman. Not too bad. Lastly, I am running Erd Tree's Favor plus two. This is a filler slot. There's so much I could recommend for this slot, like the Green Turtle Talisman for faster stamina recovery, Bull Goat Talisman for PvP to give yourself some poise. Of course, the Millicent's Prosthesis to combo your attack power and hey, get some decks. There's so many things you can put in that slot that is very filler and whatever you feel is good. For me, the Erd Tree's Favor is great because it increases your HP, stamina, and equip load. To get the Darkness Incantation, you actually need to be here in the Round Table Hold and you will need a total of three Stone Sword Keys. It's just beyond the Blacksmith. We actually go downstairs and there's two barriers of entry. The first one requiring, I believe, one key right here. And as we go in here, We'll need to turn left and go through here, which requires two stone sword keys. And inside of here, we've got drops and items. And one of them is the darkness incantation. Or to be more correct and specific, it's actually the assassin's prayer book you get. And you can bring that to any teacher who will uh, teach you incantations. So that could be Brother Corbin in the round table hall, but he does move off at a certain point. I much prefer the turtle pope here, which you can find the church of vows in the side of uh, the lakes region. You can give him books like that. And then from there, he will teach you incantations like hey the darkness incantation last but certainly not least the golden vow incantation which is going to increase our physical damage as well as give us some physical resistance which is always nice i'm standing here at the entrance of mount gilmer at the bridge of iniquity just after crossing the bridge itself and as we run up this road there will be a shack the corpse send shack you will be invaded if it's your first time here uh, and you will get a weapon drop from that invader, but it's on this body right here, the actual incantation. But this is the very edgy named Blade of Dark and Light build. Full credit once again to Josh for suggesting this to me. It's a really cool combination of these two daggers and they're very similar Ashes of War. Both look incredible. Both are particularly effective when landed, especially in PvE. And as much as I dislike the dagger's tiny range, this is very fun to play and a very unique playstyle using things like Assassin's Gambit to do all of the stealth, or of course, Darkness to hide ourselves and break aggro on enemies. Really fun to play, really unique. I hope you guys give it a go. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.